The town of Wendell traces its roots back to the 1850s. A disease known as the Granville County wilt harmed tobacco crops in Granville County, forcing farmers there to move in search of more fertile land. They chose Eastern Wake County. The population soared, so Ambrose Rose donated money for the construction of Rhodes School. The one-room school sat at Wendell's present-day elementary school. By 1878, 46 students from 6 to 21 years old attended Rhodes School, which changed its name to Wendell Academy in 1891. It was school teacher M.A. Griffin who chose the name for the town after beloved poet Oliver Wendell Holmes. Unlike the poet's name, though, train porters coming to town pronounced each syllable of Wendell with equal emphasis. That pronunciation has stuck with townspeople to this day. The town added a new brick school in 1911, known as the most modern school in the county at the time. Its first four students graduated in 1915 and remained in operation until 1965. It merged with Wendell, Roseville, and Zebulon High Schools to form Vaden Whitley High School, which later became present-day East Wake High School. The J.R. Noel store was one of Wendell's first retail stores and sold school supplies. In 1891, the town's first post office opened inside the store. Fully restored by the Wendell Historical Society, it now lies on the corner of Oakwood and Fourth Streets. Curtis and Amanda Todd also opened a small general store. During the early 1900s, one egg was worth a handful of candy. In 1809, Hepzibah Baptist Church came to the town, inspiring more churches to grow in the area. Wendell's first newspaper, the Wendell Clarion, began in 1901. The Gold Leaf Farmer later replaced the Wendell Clarion, covering social events such as teas, picnics, and dinners. Wendell also formed Wake County's first volunteer rescue squad in 1962. In 1913, Paul Brantley came to Wendell and opened a drugstore, where he developed a medicine called liver caps. It sold for three pills a dime to mostly help people cleanse their systems. Wendell was officially incorporated in 1903, but the name of its first mayor remains a mystery. A fire destroyed town's records in the 1930s. Of those that survived, some named Barry Todd as the town's first mayor, while others indicate the title went to Burl Baker. The town named C.Z. Todd, R.E. Richardson, E.V. Richardson, J.W. Lyles, and T.J. Wheeler as its first commissioners, and added the town manager position in 1934. One of Wendell's first laws enacted a ban on discharging firearms within city limits. Almost immediately, a man named E.V. Richardson violated the new law due to forgetfulness after his wife asked him to kill a chicken for dinner. The violation cost him a $1 fine. In 1906, the Raleigh-Pamlico Railroad came to Wendell, complete with a depot for ticket sales, passenger waiting, and a warehouse. Passenger service stopped in 1948, and the depot was demolished in 1970. During the 1929 Great Depression, the federally funded Works Progress Administration poured most of Wendell's sidewalks, increased the sewer system, placed curb and guttering along most streets, and funded the overhead bridge. Wendell's bank was the only bank that survived the Great Depression in eastern Wake County. It served as the sole bank for Wendell, Nightdale, and Zebulon for years. R.B. Whitley founded the bank in 1907 with a board of directors that included Jim Hinnett, C.Z. Todd, and Hyfe Brown, among others. First Union bought the bank in 1967. In addition to the bank, Whitley became a town leader, farmer, merchant, and tobacco warehouseman. During the 1918 flu epidemic, he allowed his home to serve as a hospital. He also ran a general store in Wendell for many years. By the end of World War I, Wendell housed three lumber mills, making it a major industry for the town. Lumber soon gave way to tobacco as more and more farmers moved into the area, creating a large tobacco market around the year 1916. At one time, Wendell had five tobacco warehouses, some with more than one location. Tobacco opening sales day provided a festive atmosphere for adults and children alike. Churches sold food and booths. Farmers who struggled all year would finally gain spending money after selling their first crops. This allowed them to pay bills and buy new cars and clothes. In the 1940s, the town gained Wenco Furniture. In the 1950s, several clothing manufacturers arrived. 
The 1940s and 1950s also had many notable merchants lined up on Wendell's Main Street. Hyman Katz was a white Russian who escaped from the Russian Revolution and operated a dry goods store. A perpetual going out of business sign hung in his window. Moon Mullins ran the barber shop. Farmers and other residents would come to the shop weekly to shower themselves. Hunter's Five and Dime, run by Ida Hunter, was a favorite with children. She packed the store to the ceiling with toys and notions, never throwing anything away. Isaac Cannon opened a dry goods and clothing store, which prided itself on its excellent customer service. On Saturday nights, many stores would stay open till midnight as people walked up and down Main Street. Most people only came to town on Saturday night, so they would park their cars as early as Friday afternoon to get a good parking place. For entertainment, Lake Myra provided an ideal getaway to play, swim, and host parties in surrounding cabins. Lake Glad was another popular swimming place, with its notable house lying in the middle of it. Soda Jerks provided refreshments for cars parked outside the drugstore. Most would blow their horns to order, which the soda jerk would then deliver. Usually they'd ask for a small Coca-Cola with a slice of lemon and a pack of peanut butter crackers, better known as nabs. During this time, Wendell also sent a large portion of its men and women to fight in World War II. During the 1960s and onward, the town grew at a steady pace. The 1980s saw the opening of micro-measurements in Siemens, and during the 1990s, Mortex Apparel opened its doors. Many things have also left Wendell. The tobacco market left, the high school no longer remains in town, and fewer retail stores line Main Street. On the other hand, the town now can offer many more services than it ever could have afforded before. While Wendell becomes more modern and more like other towns, it still possesses a uniqueness about it. The people are very outgoing and embrace strangers. It still is a wonderful place to live and work.